Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today I will try not to breathe on you. We're going to be talking a little bit about the coronavirus madness that's sweeping the world. Uh, we're going to get into a reading from our good friend Peter Straub's The Throat, of course. I'm going to show you some cool products that were sent to me recently by Galen Leather. I'm going to give you a few updates on what to expect on the channel and anything else that occurs to me to gab about gab this week. And then also I have some questions from you that I will answer on hashtag ask stuff and things. But first, let's start with our good friend Peter Straub's The Throat. Peter, thank you so much for allowing us to read this on the channel. Peter is an award-winning author, a viewer of Stuff and Things, and a Patreon supporter. And every week he lets us read from his novel, The Throat. Last time we ended, I believe, here, if I am not mistaken, and let us continue now. <clears throat> I shook my head. When I got to White Star, I had been still so turned around that I had noticed only a transition from an Asian turmoil to the more orderly disorder of an army base. I had the vague impression of having gone through a small town. Never, he had trouble believing it. Well, it's about time you got wet. Get wet time, Pirate said. You walk through the gate. As long as you're on foot, they don't bull crap you. You're supposed to keep the indigenous people out, not keep us in. They know where you're going. You turn into the first lane and keep going until the second turn. By the bubble, Attica said. You see a sign that says bubble in big letters. Turn right there and go under the sign. Go six doors down, knock on the green door that says L-Y. Lee? He spelled it. L-I. Lie. L-Y. Say you want six 100s. It'll be about 30 bucks. You get them in a plastic bag, which you put into your shirt and forget you have. You don't want to look too effing sneaky coming back through. Some jack, Scoot said. Why not? Across from Bumble, go into this little shack. Pick up two fifths. Jack Daniel. Shouldn't cost more than 10 bucks. New guy buys a round, said Attica. Without confessing that I had no idea what 100s were, I nodded and stood up. Lock and load, said Scoot. I think they want him to buy illicit substances so they can have a party. Interesting. We will continue with that next week. Okay, so we're going to try to get through this Sunday stuff and things. I've been having so many interruptions while trying to record today. I was recording the Galen Leather overview slash review, um, but there's been a lot of noise going on outside. Not exactly sure what's happening. Last week we had the crazy fire alarm action. Hopefully we can get through this uninterrupted, but I wanted to show you some things. I've got them here. Ugh. I got a bunch of stuff from our good friends at Galen Leather. I've reviewed some of their products on the channel in the past. Uh, I think the last thing I did was a fountain, a fountain pen, a fountain pen sleeve, a uh, zippered pen sleeve was really cool. Uh, I have my Midori Traveler's notebook here just as sort of a, a visual aid. But they sent me quite a few things. These are really cool products. They're made in Turkey. I'm not going to talk too much about them right now just because there is a full video coming on Wednesday, but for some of you fountain pen, fountain pen and notebook people out there, I just wanted to show you some of the things they sent. They sent along these everyday books and they come in these cool little canvas zippered bags and what you get are three notebooks. This is the regular size one and you will see that it's actually perfectly sized to fit a Midori Traveler's notebook, the standard Midori Traveler's. I think these also come in size for the passport notebook, and then they also have other standard sizes. But these are really cool because they're 128 pages of Tomoe River paper. And some of you will recognize that name, Tomoe River. It's a really cool, really thin, but really fountain pen friendly paper. So this is a really nice alternative for, you know, the Midori branded inserts or some of the other off-brand inserts that are out there. You get three of these in a pack, and then you also get a thing of blotting paper, but it's not actually paper. It feels more like a chamois or something. And then you get these line guides included as well. They have a small grid, big grid, small line, large line. So that's very cool. They sent me those. We're gonna take a look at those on the video. They also sent me this A5 size of the everyday book. And it comes with all the other things that were included with the regular size, the line guides, the blotting paper, and three inserts or three notebooks. And again, it's 128 pages, hand stitched down the middle. That's the way the binding works on these things. Uh, very cool. I like these quite a bit and I love Tomoe River paper. If you've never written on that paper before and you're a fan of, fan of fountain pens, you should definitely check it out. And then they sent me this big mother here. Inside this box is 
this. <laughs> this is, now let me get this name right. The Leather Zippered A5 Loosterm 1970, 1917 Notebook Folio in Crazy Horse Brown. So this is actually sized, it's a zippered notebook case or a folio, and it's actually sized for a loose term notebook, which actually I have one over here. Ugh. Like this A5 standard loose term notebook, like so, fits inside this. But right now I just have one of these A5 everyday books inside. And you can see it's quite cool. You've got your notebook sleeve here. You can also put it in with a uh, vertical orientation so if your notebook opens this way you can go in there's actually like a little cutout thing here so you can put your notebook in that way as well fits this a5 notebook really nicely you have pen loops you have a key fob got a lot of stuff going on here it's pretty cool it's a really nice vegetable tan leather mm, smells delightful looks like really good quality so i'm really looking forward to showing you guys this on wednesday we will have the full review or at least a full overview of all of these products. So check that out on Wednesday, please. So speaking of other videos that we have coming up on the channels, as you may remember, I'm gonna be moving soon. Um, I've been doing the preparations, trying to pack things away, getting ready. Next weekend, I'm actually starting to move. And then the weekend after that is the big push where we rent the truck and do the whole shebang. So next weekend, you should still have a fairly normal Sunday stuff and things. The weekend after that is up in the air. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to be able to get out. Um, there will be something. I just don't know what it will be yet, and it'll probably be a little shorter. As far as your normal midweek videos, um, this Wednesday, like I said, we're going to have that overview of those Galen Leather products. I have recorded months ago, I recorded sort of my first attempts at skateboarding. And so I may get that edited and have that for the next week. We'll see. I may just hold that in reserve. Um, we still have, I think I'm four weeks ahead with Stuff and Things Plays. I've been plugging away on those videos. So I have a video for Monday, Wednesday, Friday, every week for the next four weeks. So those will not be interrupted at all. Those should continue just as normal. Um, but then we'll see what happens on the normal Stuff and Things channel. It's going to be it's going to be very busy for the next few weeks and I'm going to do my best to get stuff out to you, but please, please bear in mind that it's going to be, like I said, very busy. And I just hope you'll, you'll be forgiving of me if it, uh, if I don't have the normal uploads that I would normally have. And I'm sure you guys will be, you're all very nice. Um, the whole move thing. Some of you are asking for like a new apartment tour and stuff. We may do something like that. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, we shall see to be determined as we're enjoying this pleasant Sunday stuff and things, I'm enjoying a little bit of Cornell & Deal Small Batch Carolina Red Flake. I reviewed that slash first impression that last week. Mm-hmm. If you haven't checked that video out, you should do so. It's a really interesting blend. I know it's not really available, but I really wanted to do a video on it and uh, it's quite good. I'm quite enjoying uh, going through this tin and I have another one put away. So that's pretty nice. Uh, speaking of inhaling things, you're not supposed to inhale your pipe. Don't inhale your pipe. Uh, this whole coronavirus thing has been, you know, brewing for months now. I haven't really mentioned it on the channel. A couple people asked me questions about it. I do live in Washington state where we have the most cases in the U.S., mostly in Seattle, mostly centered on Harborview Medical Center. Um, and people were just asking me my opinion on it. Am I worried about it? Eh, I don't know. I mean, I can remember SARS. I can remember H1N1, H1 or H1N1, H1N1. Um, I can remember quite a few of these things occurring and I am not a doctor. I am no medical expert. Uh, I'm inclined to think that this will blow over and not be a huge deal, but the media is pumping it up so much because that's what the media does. They want people to freak out because that gets them clicks and gets them views that even if this doesn't turn out to be a huge deal, just the public response to it seems as though it's going to be severe enough to cause issues. Even if the actual pandemic doesn't really amount to much. So 
I was in the grocery store the other day and there was no toilet paper. Uh, or there was just like a very little toilet paper. There was no cleaning, uh, no cleaning chemicals, cleaning supplies was just completely wiped out. There was none left in the store. And I'm thinking, what does coronavirus have to do with toilet paper? We produce toilet paper in the US. There's plenty of toilet paper in the US. Why are people buying out all the toilet paper? I don't know. Is it just because of panic, thinking that somehow it's not going to be available? I heard in, in Japan people were doing that because people in Japan thought that their toilet paper was produced in China, but then the Japanese government had to say, hey, we make most of the toilet paper in Japan. You, you're gonna be fine. And so there was like a run on toilet paper there as well. So it's more everyone else's response to the virus than it is the actual virus. I'm a relatively healthy, strong adult. I don't think that I will die if I got the coronavirus. Um, I don't think most people will. It seems like the mortality rate is around 2% so far, and that's mostly old people or people with underlying health conditions, people who are susceptible to diseases like this. Um, I remember H1N1, everyone was freaking out about it, and then it now is just kind of part of the seasonal flu every year. So many people got it. Um, it's part of the flu vaccine every single year. It's just been kind of folded into all that. So I'm not telling you not to worry about it. Uh, I'm just saying personally in my life, I, I'm not that worried. I'm more worried about everyone else's worry and how they react to that. I'm supposed to go to a concert tomorrow night. I'm really excited about, I finally get to see the Strokes in concert. They're playing a show in Seattle and my wonderful fiance, as a very, very thoughtful birthday gift for me, got us tickets to go see them. I've never been able to see them in all my life, even though they've been one of my favorite bands forever. And I'm worried that maybe it's gonna get canceled because people are canceling shows, they're canceling conventions, they're canceling many, many things. And I really don't want that to be canceled. Even though Seattle is the epicenter of the coronavirus, it seems like in Washington and one of the epicenters in the US, I would still go to the concert and I would still feel pretty safe going to the concert. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens when the warmer weather comes, if that even has any effect on it. I don't know. I'm still kind of worried about the Olympics in Japan. Not that I really care about the Olympics, but it would just be really horrible if they spent all that money preparing for the Olympics and then they were canceled or postponed. And then also my fiance and I were hoping to maybe go to Japan this year and, uh, I just don't want everyone to freak out. I want everyone to settle down and I want this to kind of blow over. Hopefully it will. Hopefully we won't have too many more deaths. Um, I guess one of the good side effects of a thing like this is that people are more careful about hygiene in general and they just think more about what they're doing. Uh, so yeah, wash your hands, take precautions, do all that good stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm not that worried. I think we're probably fine, maybe. We'll see. And now it is time for questions from you. Remember, if you have a question for me and you would like me to answer it on the Sunday Stuff and Things, tweet at SATBradley with the hashtag AskStuffAndThings, and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible on the show answering your question. Also, if you are a Patreon supporter, you can write to me there. Uh, quick update on the whole Instagram thing. Uh, I lost control of my account. I still have not gotten control back. So I think what we're gonna end up doing is starting a new Instagram for stuff and things. Mm, it's annoying, uh, but I will let you know when that happens and when I have final verdict on that. But let's get to the questions. The first one is from Twitter from Dan Hoo-ha2, at Dan Hoo-ha2. Dan says, please no robot voice, just your regular voice. And this is Dan. Okay, Dan. Hi, Bradley. On the FB or Facebook pipe group, Gentlemen's Pipe Smoking Society, the following question was asked, what's a good after dinner blend? One of the replies was that it depends on the meal, to which I would agree. What are your thoughts? Are there certain meal and tea blend pairings you go to or prefer? I look forward to your reply. Regards, Dan. Thank you for the question, Dan. Um, I don't think of pipe blends and pairing with food the same way I would a wine. And I don't really think much about pairing wine with food either because I don't drink wine that often and I'm not that fancy, but you know, I would, if I were having a steak, I wouldn't have a white Zinfandel. I would have a red or something with a steak. 
Um, because I'm not having my pipe with my dinner, I don't really worry too much about pairing because by the time I'm done eating, I'm done eating and any lingering taste on the palate I don't think will have that much effect on the taste of the pipe blend that I've chosen to enjoy afterwards. So for me it's more just a feeling of fullness will contribute maybe to a specific blend like you know many times I've recommended that Dunhill Nightcap, now Peterson Nightcap, is a great after dinner blend because being full being satiated, it's more of kind of a, an end of the evening dessert type kind of blend, Ashton Artisan's blend, things like that. So that's more where I would think about pairing with a meal, not the actual meal. Hope that helps. Next, from Jason Hunt at Hexeter. Jason says, hey Bradley, whatever happened to those fancy iPhone lenses you were waiting for? Um, that is a good question. I had a heck of a time getting a case for my iPhone to mount the lenses upon. I ordered one of the Moment lens cases. It was severely delayed. It took several months after it was supposedly supposed to ship for the case to actually get to me. And then I hated the case. I did not like it at all. It was, it just felt very thin and cheap and I just didn't like using it. So I'm actually waiting for a different case. Um, that's gonna kind of dovetail in with some of the other products that I'm gonna be reviewing soon on the channel. So stay tuned for that. Next, from Ryan McFadden, at Ryan McFadden. Hey Bradley, I saw that you're getting into skateboarding. Do you have any favorite skaters? I picked the hobby back up a few months back as well. I find it very therapeutic. As always, man, thanks for the top-notch content. Well, thank you, Ryan, for writing in and for watching. Um, I didn't really know of any pro skaters previous to me becoming interested in maybe trying to skateboard, except for, you know, I, I had heard of Tony Hawk and people like that, obviously. But when I started looking on YouTube, just looking for, I guess they call them parts. So people, they put out a video and then a skater will do a part in the video. And if they're sponsored, maybe, if you are sponsored by Real Skateboards, then Real will make a video and they'll have their sponsored skateboarders do parts in the video. I don't know much about this, but this is what I've determined so far. And so I would just start looking around on YouTube and I actually found this skater who I thought was really cool and I really liked his parts. And then I also found out, oh, he's local. He's from this area. Uh, the Pacific Northwest and he had like lived in Bellingham for a time and there was a part where he was running around Bellingham and at the Bellingham Skate Park and everything and I was like oh I really like his style he's really cool um, I don't know about personality but just his actual skating <clears throat> and then I found out he's in jail now uh, for involuntary manslaughter he got drunk and drove with somebody and they died and that sucks his name was Corey Kennedy or his name is Corey Kennedy and uh, yeah, that's one of the few people I'd ever looked up and then I found out that he's actually convicted of a crime and serving a prison sentence. Um, I'm trying to think of anyone else who I've seen. I've seen uh, Businitz, I can't remember his first name. He skates for real, I think. I liked his parts, some of the things I had seen. I actually looked him up because the skating shoes I got were the Businitz, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, Businitz Volk from Adidas and I liked the shoes and I was like, well, maybe I should look up who this pro is, whose shoes I'm wearing. Uh, he seemed good. Um, I've seen stuff about Rodney Mullen. He's an older guy who was kind of the godfather of a lot of the different tricks and things that people do uh, in street skating now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, I can't really think of too many others. If you have any really cool skaters, let me know. I, it's interesting to watch those skate parts. Next, from Jess Steele at Jess, or no, Jess Steer at Jess Steer. Uh, Last night I watched the video of you talking about Peterson pipes. Nice. I also noticed that your rims look amazing. No dark spots at all. How do you take care of your rims? Uh, I can't say that all of my rims look amazing. I try to keep them clean. I try not to scorch my rims when I'm lighting my pipe. But inevitably, as you use your pipe, you are going to get some rim darkening. It's just pretty much impossible to avoid. After I'm done with a pipe, I will oh, I lick my finger, I'll rub it over the rim, and then I will take a microfiber cloth, 
lick that and then rub it onto the rim and you'll notice you get a lot off but there's still always going to be a little bit left behind. Um, you can try to keep them waxed or polished. That kind of puts a little protective layer, but depending on what kind of rim you have, what kind of pipe it is, the way you, the way you light it and everything, yeah, I've had to make my peace with rim darkening. It's just something that happens. Next and final question is from Cameron. Ugh, can't pick up paper because I don't have fingernails. I mean, I have fingernails, but they're very sharp. At CB... No, at C Brown 080 or 080, hashtag ask stuff and things. Hey, so through my methodical smoking of everything I can get my hands on, I finally determined I like and have the best results with Virginia based blends and vapors, leaving me a number of flakes to try. How do you typically prepare flakes? Well, I think you'll probably have seen this on any reviews I've done of flake blends, but I typically like to rub them out fully. Uh, and I'm not talking about, you know, minuscule grains, but I rub them out until they're almost like a ribbon cut. That's what I typically like to do. Occasionally I will fold and stuff, but typically I rub them out. I just find it easier to deal with. I find it easier to keep the pipe lit when I do that. Um, and easier to get through the entire bowl as well. But there are some benefits to folding and stuffing as well. Sometimes the, the flavors get married a little better that way but typically I do the rubbing out of the flake. Gang, I think that's it for this week's Sunday Stuff and Things and for this week's hashtag Ask Stuff and Things portion of the show. Uh, we would like to get to the very best part of the show though, and that is where we thank our Patreon supporters. Now more than ever, we appreciate so much the people who support us on Patreon. It really goes a long way to helping out both channels. Uh, me getting products to review, equipment, and all that good stuff. So thank you so much. And if you are a Patreon supporter, or if you would like to be a Patreon supporter, there's a link in the description box below. It is patreon.com slash stuff and things show. And if you are a supporter at the $25 or more level every month, you get a special shout out every week on the Sunday stuff and things. So let us thank our good friends, Glenn, Derek, Cody Striegler, Kirk Crompton, Private Eye, C.W. Piperman, Ryan McFadden, Corbin Borbin, Adam Loveless, M.D. of the North, Ryan Stoffer, and A.J. Hogue. And now let us thank the Maniacs, the people who support the channels at $100 a month and the people who are entitled to a Skype conversation every three months. People like Peter Straub, Thank you so much, Peter. Bob McGee, thank you, Bob. And Michael Pilcher, our newest maniac and a really nice guy. Thank you, Mike, Michael, very, very much for being a supporter on Patreon. And gang, thank you so much for watching. Please stay tuned for the Wednesday video on the Galen Leather Products. Also, Stuff and Things plays every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific time. Those videos are still going up. Next week, we should have a normal Sunday stuff and things. The week after that, not sure. I'm going to be right in the thick of the move. Uh, it's going to be hectic. It's going to be stressful. But hopefully, we'll get all that taken care of fairly soon, and we can get back to our regularly, regularly scheduled programming. But until next time, until we meet again, I've been a good friend, Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a pleasant Sunday stuff and things. I'll see you later. Mm-hmm.